for me, it's the whole package. So for me, it sums up uh, an age of real uh, care and devotion and dedication. There's so much craftsmanship that goes into it, the making of it. And, and what you find with the music is that the composers have so much care for the actual instrument, the way they write for it. There's a, there's a kind of universal passion that you find through the ages of composers who write for the harpsichord. And I think this is because they were actually also players themselves. So it's so personal. And then when you come to it as a player and you're playing this music that they wrote for, them, for themselves or for friends, oh, it's a wonderful feeling of um, kind of being really at one with the music. What you've got on the harpsichord, which gives it its defining sound, is that the strings are plucked. The mechanism is actually really simple um, compared to the piano in that there are essentially four elements. That's the key. Um, and from what you can see of the keys, they actually run much longer than, than, than you can see underneath here. And they're on the long side underneath the soundboard. And resting on the end of every key is a wooden jack, which is this. And you can see them all there. Each key has one. Um, at the end of each jack is a plectra. And each jack rests just above each string. So basically, I push down the key, key pushes up the jack, and the jack plucks the string. They're not only uh, beautiful to hear, they're also equally aesthetically pleasing to look at. And that was always a very important part with the harpsichord. Because of their size, um, you had the possibility to decorate them. And they really, really did in the Brock period, they went to town. So yeah, they've got, um, they've got this, this double-edged charm, if you like, the sound and the, the look. It's really fun to think that Handel, as a young man, my kind of age would have been walking around this house, living here, entertaining guests, making music. Um, and for me to be sat here playing an antique instrument from the time, well, that's absolutely thrilling. Um, and it lends itself perfectly to the size of room. Um, you don't miss a trick, you don't miss a detail in this setting. I think that's what Handel would have loved. The electric guitar for me is the most incredible instrument just because it's loud in your face. You can do anything you want with it. Even when you're not actually striking a note, even when you've just got the hands on the guitar, it, it sounds amazing, you know? It, it, it's the coolest thing in the world, by far. It's, it's amazing to be here, it's, it's an honor. It's Jimmy's bedroom, isn't it? I've seen uh, thousands of iconic photos of him sitting on the bed playing guitar. He had George Harrison round all the time. They sat and played guitar in this house, in this room. It's doesn't get any cool, though. it's Jimmy's room. For me, personally, the, uh, the Jimi Hendrix sound, the real difference for, for him versus kind of guitar players that had gone before him was um, you had a very kind of rhythm guitar central uh, person in your band or, or a lead guitar player. There wasn't kind of uh, a mix of both. What Jimmy did was he kind of broke down all those barriers. So to do that, he would fuse chords with kind of lead lines all the time. If you were playing E, B and A, for instance, anyone else may at the time have played E. So D and A. But Hendrix would have kind of put that little bit more in there together. Thing together in uh, 
in that unique way that made Hendrix Hendrix, I think. His hammer-ons and pull-offs uh, would just be beyond belief. So if you took like a really simple uh, pentatonic pattern and had... So if you're using that in a lead line, Hendrix would have really good kind of... And you can instantly hear that's, you know, you can keep that going forever. That's Jimi Hendrix right there, just those two. Uh, his double stops were fantastic, where you play two notes together. Just the idea of being able to play a pentatonic and just putting a few of those techniques gives a real kind of Hendrix sound. And his, his use of rhythm, where you get that kind of... Um, you, you hear it on the start of kind of like Voodoo Child, where, where it's got that, um, that kind of idea where you get those clicks in between notes, sounds, um, yeah, really, really good. And when you put the whole thing together with a simple kind of pentatonic scale, you get that lovely kind of like... which is instant kind of like Jimi Hendrix sound just from like a really, really simple pentatonic scale. There's five notes in that scale and you can just use a little bit of technique like that to make it sound Jimi Hendrix as such. It's, it's awesome. It's a cool thing.